Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, waking up for a very early, a very underslept uh, Saturday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, want to be wishing you well, no matter where you are coming from in this good old cryptocurrency land, whether you're waking up for a very early morning like myself, maybe having a cup of coffee, good on you, or you're just coming back from a late night session uh, over there in the Western Hemisphere. Well, I always want to welcome you and uh, and wish you the happiest of the happiest, the best of the best days. Saturday is possible as we do get on over to the live scene right here, right now. And Bitcoin having some action in the early morning hours. Unfortunately, I was completely asleep during this. Um, however, uh, last night I do remember uh, speaking about on stream that I did take a short at 38.85. I actually ended up getting to close some of that right around the 21 exponential, right around 37.95, uh, something like that. So a nice play to be made there, right there. But of course, in this market, everything seems to happen in you know like five minute splurts. So looking at the lower time frames, we're really gonna have to dissect this down as uh, there's a few competing narratives going on. Now, of course, Bitcoin grinding up against all this resistance right here around this 3900 area. Nothing's changed there from the medium time frame perspective, but the short term time frame perspective uh, was initiated as we did break this rising channel down uh, with this uh, hourly total closing right below 3865 and then straight on down for another hundred dollars all the way down, uh, wick down to 3742 and a half. Jesus fucking Christ on um, on Bit Mexico. That is just the beauty of, of Wick City right now. Anyways, as you can see, uh, hourly was defended above 3800. So of course the medium time frame perspective does not change right now that was only to do with the short-term time frame perspective to go back over what i was looking for on the medium time frame uh, perspective to actually fully be confirmed changes i need to see a daily total, not a daily dollar but like a two-hour dollar close um either above the 89 exponential right over here at 39 uh 30 where is it coming in around uh yeah 39.35 actually it is slowly crawling its way down and uh or to the downside i need to see a, i need to see a two-hour double close below about 37.90 so you can very obviously see that we did not you know violate either one of those and right here right now bitcoin actually rallying all the way back up just fucking brutal man fucking brutal as you can see um you know nothing's changed from this perspective i do want to check out daily stokes they are going to be pointed up right now and uh it is technically not confirmed as of the current moment in time it will be confirmed if we do close here or higher by end of day uh here being about 38 uh, 74 and a half by the way as you notice i've also changed around where my camera is that's so that you can see the price right below my face there you go <laughs> um been a lot of uh, a lot of people asking for that so hopefully that uh, hopefully that helps out anyways um yeah that's that's pretty much what's going on in mr bitcoin right now as far as those time frames go i'm curious what the medium time frames are looking like right now we got four hour stokes actually just pointed up um regaining the 21 exponential so these actually do look like they want to give another rally back into that uh, supply zone uh, what about the six hour though six hour are going to be coming down eight hours should be coming down as ooh, eight hour is technically technically down right now but uh if we add another twenty dollar rally, that will that uh, that will open up, and we will be finishing that and uh, confirming that in the next hour and forty one minutes. So again, a lot can actually change around during the weekend. But typically speaking, I don't see like major ranges being broken during a weekend. You know, typically just uh, you know runs, so you'll stop runs as we saw to the downside and uh, and likely to the upside as well. If you know if you're going to go test some supports, you're probably going to go test some of the resistances. Uh, Ten hour, same sort of thing. Actually, sorry, not same sort of thing. Still up right now. And again, this is going to really depend on where we close this next dildo. So for now, it will be up. But if we had about a $10, a $10 down from here, it will actually be down. And that is why it's very difficult on the weekends to get this price action right in a very tight range. You can really only talk about the macro or sorry, the medium to, to higher time from perspective, which can be made good decisions off of. But right now... Um, you know, 12 hour, 12 hour looks like it wants to go up to me as well. Technically, uh, could be, could be considered crossing down right now, but still charging his way up as uh, we do approach 3880. And you do see the 12 hour RSI finally get out of the bearish control zone and really, and really put it in time during the neutral zone, which is typically a good thing as far as this consolidation goes. So again, you know, you can really see both ways here, but let me just remind um, remind you and also remind myself what is coming in around this range you know what are we dealing with that has been stopping all of these wicks for the past uh, two three weeks right around that 3900 uh, level well of course I do consider this a front run of the 89 exponential this cyan moving average which has been governing price action uh, all the way back towards 
I mean, September of last year, yes, we did have this one off right here, but you can also notice that we did not both open and close a daily total above the 89 exponential. So the last time that we actually even did that was, was September of last year. You see that it's actually perfectly gotten the highs of all of the last uh, bull traps, or maybe not, I, I wouldn't really consider these bull traps, but the highs of these consolidations before leading, on, leading into the more um, aggressive downtrend. Anyways, you can see that we're actually taking up above 38.85 right now. So it looks like we're going to give another run to the overall supply zone. But uh, but before we can get there, hopefully I can get out exactly what else is in that range. As it's not just the 8 on exponential, but it's also the monthly, the monthly 50 exponential, this green moving average right here, which has been holding Bitcoin back for the past three, four months. As you can see, Bitcoin broke it for the first time in... November of 2018, sorry, it did not break into November of 2018, but it, it came all the way down. Then we broke it formally in December of 2018. And then ever since then, we've actually been living below it and it's been governing our, um, you know, our, our, our wicks to the upside ever since then. So again, when I'm looking at something like this, I'm thinking to myself that higher time frame perspective is not changed around. And as long as we are below the 50 exponential, I would actually be bearish. And again, that's currently coming in around uh, 3883. So actually, I mean, we're technically above it by a few bucks right now. But again, when we're talking about a very high time frame like this, you can have like a buffer zone of a little bit, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, but Jesus Christ, man. Bitcoin actually having another uh, another 10 bucks up, 38.90. Going to be getting right into that supply zone. It's beautiful when it actually happens on stream. I don't have any positions right now, and I don't really care to have any positions right now. Um, but there's your monthly, you know, the, the 50 exponential coming in right around there. Now, the thing is that as long as Bitcoin is being be held in by this, more importantly, I do look at this as an overall consolidation below a major exponential that is being respected and, you know, more importantly, actually broken for the first time in its history. This is a little bit more uh, readily available when we look at the three day double time frame right here, which we can see that this is pr the price structure of a very, you know, it's very corrective price structure. You can see that also in the volume signature going from left to right. It is that nice falling off in volume. Uh, I can even just make, you could even make a nice trend line right around here. I mean, not that you really have to make it, you know, work perfectly. Uh, it just so happens to do that. But overall, that that, tell, that that tells me that this price action is is indeed corrective in nature and to be considered a consolidation, which as we verified on the higher time frames, would be a consolidation below a major exponential as these two moving averages approach each other. That's a red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential from the monthly perspective. And to me, those are going to be the operating terms that will dictate where this consolidation breaks to. Hopefully I got that all, right, all out correctly and that made sense. But Basically, what I'm saying is that uh, if Bitcoin does fail to get back above the 50 exponential, basically in the next month, uh, we will see these guys cross and they will be confirmed to the downside. That will just intensify all of the bot and algorithmic selling, which will likely send this consolidation resolve it to the downside, which from a higher time frame perspective on a monthly would be likely sending us down to the 89 exponential down around about 2500 ish area, which would you know kind of make sense. Anyways, not only do we have just the 50 exponential from the monthly coming around this area, but we also have we get on can get on over here to the two week double time frame the 10 simple moving average this red moving average right here which has been governing price action ever since january of last year january 20, 2018 why is this important well bitcoin's been unable to both open and close a two week total above this moving average ever since it essentially confirmed a downtrend as far as this time frame goes you can see that you know yes we did try to close one above right here but it we were unable to both open and close one above on the next dildo in fact a clear and obvious trap to follow and ever since then it's just governed the last uh, the last highs of the, of, of the prior wicks and as you can see you know actually actually uh, sending it down from that 4200 level that we saw the past uh, past couple weeks in uh, late February, and then once again we've actually grounded up went uh, right to it at thirty, uh, technically at thirty nine seventeen. So everything's right around that range. You know, we have the fifty exponential, we have the two week ten simple moon average, we have the daily eighty nine exponential. We're going to go over some a few more things actually, um, but this very important to me as well because you can see again this is a very corrective price structure and to be considered a consolidation. So as long as we're respecting that ten simple moon average, I would be looking at these two moving averages, which actually have confirmed to the downside the yellow twenty one and the green fifty five to denote that this consolidation is likely gaining momentum to the downside which i would agree with as long as we are beheld in by this 10 simple so again that is what is at stake right now does that mean that bitcoin can't bake can't, can't break above this current supply zone no it doesn't mean that at all it just means that if we do, we have something new going on. But for now, I would interpret this as consolidation below all these moving averages, which light more likely to be resolved to the downside. Not only that, but let's go over to the four-day uh, dildo time frame. 
four day delta time frame you can see has been held in by this yellow 21 exponential but more importantly we have gotten the four day delta death cross right here so my rule with the with the death cross is that once you got the death cross the 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 green 50 and the purple 200 um then I look for the 21 exponential to kind of be the signal. So as long as we're governed below it, I would actually be overall bearish from this time frame's perspective. Now, of course, this is a stark contrast to the lower time frames, which you know you can make a bullish argument for. But the higher time frames I just want to show are still very much bearish, um, as long as these areas are are, are 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 held below. And again, this 21 exponential is coming in around where? Around 39.05 and a half. Uh, you can also see the blue 377 ancient technology from the traditional markets uh, actually governing the last one, two, three highs. Uh, for the last few months um, and where is that coming in around you know 30 39 uh, 30 essentially where the 89 exponential is on the daily so again a lot of things coming in around this area uh, i think that uh, you could you could make an argument that the, that the rsi is kind of flatline but not a huge deal uh, more importantly, you can see a very obvious rejection on the last try to even get above. Um, let's go over to the three day. Three day stokes have crossed down. This is unconfirmed though. If we do have like a hundred dollar run to the upside, they will open back up. Um, this will be confirmed to the downside if we stay here or lower or anywhere or anywhere below thirty nine fifty. I'd imagine um, in the next two days. Uh, that would likely be a big deal as each and every time that we actually have crossed the Stokes down on the three day dollar time frame, it has not been good for the bulls. Uh, this was your last highs in early January. This was your dump of August of uh, 20, uh, 2018 from 8,400 to 6,000. This was your dump of May 2018 from 10,000 to 6,000. This was your dump of um, of uh, uh, Feb uh, February's uh, last double top uh, last year from 12,000 to 6,000. Again, sorry, uh, struggling with my words as it is an early morning. Um, then we can crawl down to the two-day double time frame and same and actually a little bit more advanced right here as, as you'd imagine the two-day double time frame has crossed down and has confirmed down and same sort of idea with this guy each and every time that we've crossed in the more bullish territory zone right here right here right here right here all matching up with those prior dumps that we that we spoke about so again that is something that I do want to have in my mind um, as we do approach a very critical time of the of the good old charts and as you can see the 21 exponential on the two-day double time frame actually did hold up the dump to the downside so again from the higher time frame perspective uh, you know every nothing's really changed there I'd still be bearish of course the trend is your friend until the end of the trend and we can go we can certainly talk about what I need to see in order to change my, my mind around but for now I do want to uh, focus back down into the lower time frames because Bitcoin uh, medium time frames do want to I mean I mean they do want to rally back up we just fucking saw that <laughs> you know again I, I started out this uh, this video saying that uh, we're just kind of seeing it um, you know, play out right now. But to put back on the drawing tools, uh, this this blue supply zone is what I've been referring to. Also denoted by the two three six Fibonacci retracement. So just another thing coming around there. We have the four day, we have the three day, we have the two week, we have the monthly, we have the daily, and now we have the two three six. Um, we should also be having, if we go over here to the CMEs, uh, you'll notice on the CMEs last night right before they closed this was rejected this trend line going all the way back to late november which has been governing the cme's uh lower highs one two three four five once again providing the impetus for another resistance and we can see a very clear and obvious rejection of this level again coming in around the 382 fibonacci retracement it is closed for the weekend by the way it did close at uh, 3865 so i'd imagine that spot prices are probably going to be you know probably going to be be held in this range throughout the weekend i'd imagine you know uh, sorry but probably probably gonna, probably gonna happen um again you know i mean does doesn't need to happen what if we gap down we could gap down um but a very clear rejection like this over the weekend would would lead me to believe that we're unlikely to clear 3900 over the weekend but again my opinion is null and void i don't care about my opinion i don't trade my opinion if i see bitcoin start closing some two hour dollars above 39 you know 30 ish area 39 40 especially i would get instantly bullish for a move to about 4200 that is what it's that is what it's that is what is at stake at the on the lower time frames right now or, or even on the medium time frames i should say so <clears throat> again media you know lower time frames are pretty much i'd say overall neutral as long as they're between uh 39 and uh 3790 you could just call it 3800 um whichever one of those breaks first is going to be the next medium term direction if it breaks to the upside i would be looking for a move to about 4200 and probably beyond if it does break to the downside i would be looking for you know probably to test the range lows overall you know over time 
Anyways, uh, as you can see over here on the CMEs, they did close Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 38.65. So again, that will be of of of, uh, of interest when they open back up tomorrow, Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, or sorry, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm gonna I'm gonna want to know where spot is in relation to that. If spot is is uh, below where CMEs closed, then I'd be looking for a rally and probably sell the gap fill. If it uh, if it is above, then I'd probably be looking for a buy on the gap fill and uh, and play a little bit of a, at the very least a bounce. I mean, if 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 we actually opened above. If spot's going to be tra trading above uh, CMEs when they open tomorrow on Sunday, that would actually be extremely bullish. But um, again, with the way that we ended, especially on a rejection like this, I'd say that that's a le little bit less likely. We do have our four-hour stokes coming down. I'm curious what our hourly is saying right now. Hourly is down as well. What about daily? Daily is fresh cross up, and the daily has been pretty good on CMEs uh, as far as stokes go. Um, daily, daily uh, RSI not telling us anything. I mean, I mean, if I had to say some, I'd say it's it's cons it's a bearish consolidation, but uh, luck can go on from here. Um, I want to go back to Mr. Bitcoin and see there was about to be a signal given on the two hour jewel last night. I'm curious, did it play out before that move or not? Just want to show. Yep. Happening right here. And the and that was like the dildo right before the the nice downfall. So not bad for for all the people who are uh, new to the jewel. That's what a good signal can look like. And uh, again, am I am I saying that that you're going to get a move like this every time? No, that's you typically get you typically get a nice move but 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 uh but a move like this is a is an extra bonus um i'm curious what are our two hour uh, stokes doing right now a lot of snaking around a lot of snaking around that's you know to be expected on the weekend <sighs> a lot of directionless uh type shit on the um on, on, on the higher time frames, the lower time frames look like a breakout and breakdown every fucking second of the day, but that's because it's a lot easier to hunt people out on the weekends. Um, so yeah, let's see. I'm curious where this uh, next hour the dildo closes as if it does close below this rising trend line that we broke down from um, last night, I actually might take a position off that. That'd be about 38.75 uh, if we do close below. The, uh, sorry, if we close this hour, hour at the, this hourly below. Um, actually, actually, we'll consider a trade like that. But you know, overall, I just do consider this last week that we got another test of basically the supply zone. You know, it's in the range. We got all the way up to 38.90. Technically speaking, I have it started around 38.95. It's it, you know, it's all the same as far as I'm concerned. I'm curious what the higher time frames look like after a rally like this. Um, I mean, 12 hour looks okay right here. I mean, the 12 hour actually looks like kind of wants to go. Uh, Stokes are going to dictate that coming up on the next tick though. Uh, what about 10 hour? Uh, 10 hour, a little bit less so. Uh, I'm curious if we do lose uh, 38.50 by the uh, by the next three hours and uh, 30 minutes, then there's something new to consider um, as far as the lower time frames go. But again, we're actually going to be getting a golden cross, a 10 hour dildo golden cross pretty soon. Uh, if 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 price action remains above about 38.10. In the next, um, I'd say day, day and a half, and that would likely be a big deal. I mean, I mean, the last time that we got something like that was all the way, well, actually, all the way back on over here. Um, the last time that we got it was was on this run to 8400. This bull trap. The time before that was this last bull trap, or the bull trap before that at uh, 10,000. And the time before that was actually really good because the time before that was all the way down at like you know at like a thousand dollars so uh pretty damn good overall uh you know it's uh, in a bull market it's basically perfect uh but in a bear market calling the uh calling the last grasp for air on these um on these uh traps so again it will be very interesting to see if we actually do get this cross if we do get this cross you know could that be the emphasis for for actually breaking f uh, for, uh finally this resistance that we've been looking at at around 3900 3940 yeah very well could be Again, this area right here. So to wrap up the lower time frames, to wrap up the medium term time frames, as long as Bitcoin is below this blue box or and above essentially this area right here at around 37, um, 3790, nothing's changed as far as that range goes. But there is incredible importance on what's going on right now because if Bitcoin does break above this blue box territory, I'd be looking for a quick move over to about 4150, 4200, probably reaccumulate and then probably try higher into the mid 4000s. If the opposite happens, if we do break 3,800 first, then I would be looking for another quick move down towards uh, 30, 3,650, test the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement, test this horizontal, test also this de uh, descending trend line going all the way back, governing our lower highs from uh, late November, which would be meeting price action right there. If Bitcoin were to actually break 3,650, I'd get extremely bearish um, to seeing 
I, I don't think I, I can't say new lows based off that. But, but what I can say is uh, uh, very, 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 very likely around 3,400, the range lows of the overall formation. Anyways, that's going to do it for right there. I do want to quickly talk about um, what I would need to see for Bitcoin to switch my my macro perspectives. As we as we briefly discussed, um, the purple 200 exponential on the weekly is of great importance to me. There's three things I'm looking for. This is the first one and the easiest one to do. Although you can see that it's not been so easy. I mean, it's this is, the purple 200 exponential has been rejecting Bitcoin ever since the more aggressive downtrend uh, began in uh, in November. Um, but as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing uh, weekly doles below the purple 200 exponential, I don't believe that there is any, you know, it's, re it's not really appropriate to be talking about the lows are in. Um, and of course, that does that mean that Bitcoin can't get above it? Of course it can, but I need to see it proven first. If that happens, I'd be looking for a run into the, you know, into the mid to deep 4,000s perhaps, you know, 4,800 uh, would be right around the corner. The second thing is significantly more important and I'd actually be putting even more weight on this. And that is the monthly, the monthly, uh, the monthly 21 exponential. As long as Bitcoin is below there, I am overall bearish, but that also means that Bitcoin could rally up all the way to test the, two, uh, the, the 21 exponential at 5,200, redirect from there, and then still remain overall bearish. But, you know, this would obviously come in confluence with the two week. Uh, if Bitcoin d actually did close monthly above the 21 exponential, I would immediately become, I would immediately become bullish. Um, you know, per, a personal preference. And that actually gr greatly changed my tune if even the weekly uh, trigger was hit as well. The third and final and most important, but you're probably going to know beforehand, uh, trigger would be if Bitcoin got ab back above about 6,000, the area that it spent so long going sideways upon, uh, zero reason to be bearish if that were to happen. But for now, as you can see, we are well below this. In fact, uh, the 21 exponential getting the last bear market perfectly. Once we broke to the downside, very bad, led on to capitulation. Then once we broke it up, back up to the upside, more importantly, that was the beginning of your bullish momentum. Perfect entry, actually, I'd, I'd argue. And again, the 21 exponential on the monthly is something that I used in traditional markets as a uh, as a market maker authorized trader to judge if a stock, if an asset was generally bullish or generally bearish over the long term. So again, um, right now, Bitcoin's still obviously very below it. So, 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 so we talked about, uh, we talked about Bitcoin. We talked about uh, CMEs. Did we talk about uh, GBTC? No, we did not. GBTC closing the day out strong. Uh, it's closing the day out on its highs. Uh, I'd be bullish looking at the, um, looking at higher timeframes on GBTC. Yes, we did just reach our prior high. Could it put in just another lower high? Yeah, very, 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 very possible. But right now, I mean, there's a lot of good things going on in the daily. Daily Stokes crossing up. Daily RSI taking off. Uh, daily jewel not telling us anything right now uh, but what about lower time frames what about like a four hour mm, yeah four hour looks good as well you know four hour looks good uh, fills the gap right here gets gets bought right back on up okay fair enough got to respect that technically yes there is resistance literally right where we are right now at about 488 uh, or a few ticks above I suppose but you know this if this thing does take out that high I mean that's gonna be the first higher hunt in a very long time that's gonna be a big deal um, so again, you know, GBDC obviously does not trade on the weekends. So we'll just have to wait this one out. But uh, this, if I were looking at this, I'd be more bullish. Um, let's go look at the underlying market dynamics right now. Let's go look at the longs and shorts. Shorts getting a lot more interested. We do see shorts now above 20,000. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and dissect this. But look at the ratio now. It is it is severely collapsing on each other. We are seeing longs at about 23,500 open longs. We are seeing shorts at 20,500 open shorts. Uh, 3,500 of these guys are hedged. So it's actually not as much. We really have about a little under 17,000 open naked shorts shorts, which is not, uh, is, is really, 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 really low. Um, but more importantly, looking at, you know, the ratio is still in favor of the bulls. No, no doubt about it. It's sorry. It's still in favor of the longs. No doubt about that. And that does offer up the potential for, you know, fireworks for, uh, uh, generated in the opposite direction of those longs, uh, desired positions. But more importantly for the shorts right now, this red box territory, which again, looking at the underlying mark dynamics has, led on to the major dumps of the past year each and every time this was your dump in your double top of february last year at twelve thousand uh, before going down to six thousand this was your top at ten thousand before going down to six thousand in may this was your top at eighty four hundred before going down to six thousand this was your breakage of six thousand down to three thousand and then once again we we remained in this area for about two weeks and now shorts are getting interested once again which is 
very, 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 very key because we are at, as we described on all of the lower time frames, or sorry, not even lower time frames, but but macro time frames below critical resistances right now. So as shorts start to get more and more interested putting on positions, I would imagine that if shorts are going to take back over, they do it from this position while they still have all of the monthly, all of the two week, all of the four week, or sorry, all the four day, all the three day, all the daily and and, and beyond on their side. This is where I'd imagine that they actually do put in, you know, put in some pressure. So again, this is what I'd be looking for. We do see shorts getting out of this region. So if it is going to emerge, I believe that it does happen from here. Um, you know, if the bear is going to take back on over, if the bears fail to take on over, and if the and if the bears do lose like 39, 3, 39 to thirty nine forty, we they will have we will now have people probably to liquidate once again, and that will actually provide more fuel for that run into the you know into the mid to low four thousands. So again, looking at something like this does tell me that overall, looking at the timing of these features, likely to happen if it is going to happen now, or I mean now now is a terrible term to use because it, I. I when I say now, looking at a daily like this, that means in like three days, within three days, I'd be looking for something like that. Anyways, go check on the uh, the, the crypto fear and greed index. We are once again taking out a 55, um, which is in the greedy zone. Yesterday we were technically neutral. The day before that we were a little bit on the greedy side as well. Uh, but more importantly, going over here to the actual chart, let me make sure that you can see it. Yes, you can. Beautiful. Oh, it's like my it's like my head is cut out just perfectly for this. <laughs> Thanks mom and dad for, uh, for, for shaping with, with a beautiful cone head. Um, but again, you know, when the crypto fear and green index has gotten into, or sorry, gotten above the 50 marker that has initiated major dumps for the past year as well. Each and every time, you know, same areas that we just spoke about February, double top at 12,000 last year, uh, may top at 10,000 last year. Uh, August top at 8,400 last year, uh, September top, uh, November top before going down to six, uh, from 6,000 to 3,000. And then once again, we are back above this range. So to me, this is telling me that the underlying market dynamics are both, you know, on the sides of the bears historic, you know, for the past year, historically speaking, that has been the trend that major dumps have emerged from this area. So this next move is, is so critical as far as I'm concerned, because it will drastically change the medium time frame perspective, which can have leeway into the macro perspective. But as we looked at the macro perspective needs a lot more work to be done before that really changes around. But that doesn't mean we can't have, you know, a, a massive rally either. You're going to have your rallies in your bear market, just like you're going to have your dumps in your bull market. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things have to be, have to be agnostic in a range like this when price action is floating around, especially on a weekend when hunts are very, 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 uh, normal, <laughs> very, very <laughs> just happen all the fucking time. Um, you know, keep the eyes on the prize right here. Don't get caught up in the hopium. Don't get caught up in the bullshit. Don't get caught up in the doom and gloom either. Um, anyways, let's go back on over to Mr. Buterol and let's go check out the top shit coins, which Mr. Buterol actually did lose. If I go over here to the daily, did lose the 21 exponential last night, did close below on the daily. We closed uh, 136 and 18 cents, and it was about uh, 20 cents above. So we actually have officially lost that. Also, the 10 simple. Um, yes, we are having a rally uh, uh, alongside Mr. Bitcoin as well. But let's go down to the lower time frames and see how this looks. Yeah, looking at it right now, you can see that the critical area for Mr. Buterall to break out of is this 143 and a half area. As long as he's below there. It's just to be considered consolidation. And actually, I would argue that with the breakage of the daily 21, I would probably be more on the side of the, uh, I'd be on, on, on more the side of the, of, of the bears right now. However, when I look at the lower time frames, that critical support that needs to be broken is right here, 135 and a quarter. If 135 and a quarter can be broken, then, oh man, we already had the move down to, to 131 and a half. I think we talked about that last night. Um, if that was going to break down, so that does actually kind of complicate a little bit. But if we actually can break below 135 and a quarter on on like a two hour dildo time frame, then I would be looking for a move down to at the very least 127 and probably beyond and probably beyond after after that. You got to be thinking what's Bitcoin going to be doing. But of course, same sort of range: 143 and a half versus 135. It's actually a nice little range right there. Um, you can't see the 0.5 uh, basically governing these, you know, the, this last sort of accumulation period. So I'd imagine that this is going to be the massive area of, uh, of battlement, if you will, if uh, if he does turn down. But of course, higher time frames, we are still in the context of an overall rising channel right here now, aren't we? Which 
I'd be running with as long as we are creating lower high or sorry just basically not above 162 if mr Beaterall does crawl his way back above 162 i would be looking for a quick move to test you know 190 um sorry 180 and then probably 200 but you know the macro areas for mr Beaterall are all the way up here at around 220 ish on uh, on finex um overall this ascending trend line that, ha that was broken to the upside in may of last year sorry uh started in may last year at 800 and then broke into the upside about three weeks ago in uh, middle of February. Um, I would look for this guy to get retested overall if we were to break down below this over time. Over time. So again, a lot at stake here as well. Probably just going to follow Bitcoin, but did have a, certainly the most bearish of the of the top three, you know, um, uh, Buterol, Bitcoin, and uh, Mrs. Litecoin, which we're going to go check out right now. But before that, I do want to check out uh, Daily Oscars. Daily Stokes are up. Daily Stokes are up. I mean, this would be, I, this has been a very good indicator for the past I mean, really, for the past year on Mr. Buterall, um, I'm curious what the jewel looks like. Uh, jewel not giving us anything, but could be setting up. It might be a setup, but man, it's right in the middle there. I really don't like taking those. Uh, I like taking them in the more critical zones. Uh, daily RSI not telling us much either. Literally right in the middle, rejecting the bearish control zone, but also rejecting the bullish zone. I uh, don't have a strong opinion here. Um, I don't have a strong opinion here, but it, it does look like it wants to give another test to the upside. If I mean, if you don't really want to consider that, but you know, 143 and a half, again, the critical area, if it does break that to the upside, I would be looking for really a quick move to 152 and probably beyond, uh, you know, personally, I think that you'd get back to your prior high at 160, 161. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin, uh, charging all the way back up to 57 bucks and, Oh, back. Uh, I, I know I was speaking about this yesterday about the daily jewel on uh, on Litecoin. This is not a sell. This is not a sell at all. In fact, this could be setting up for a nice uh, a nice another rally, is what it's telling us. But um, again, you know, this guy did or sorry, girl, gal. <laughs> it's Women's Appreciation Day, so we got to appreciate her. Be very nice to her, Mrs. Litecoin. I respect you. I respect you, and I will buy you dinner and call you afterwards. Anyways, <laughs> where does that come from? Nobody knows. Um, but, uh, you know, looking at these time frames right here, we got all the way down to 54 bucks in the overnight hours. Uh, we spoke about that on stream last night that this guy was likely to have, or sorry, girl was likely to have a pullback. Don't want to send, don't want to assume generous right now though. Uh, was likely to have a pullback and, uh, did at around 54 bucks, but picked up instantly. I mean, this is what you expect out of really bullish things actually. Uh, so yes, while we are still on the, are, while we are still on in the overall context of a of, a, of an ascending broadening wedge which is typically a bearish pattern bearish leave is all pattern uh there's only so many times that you can tap the upwards the the upside resistance before it breaks i mean it gets weaker and weaker each and every time as the saying goes and uh it is rising over time as well so it does make it tricky because each and every day that we that goes past uh that we actually don't break it it rises by another like quarter um, but if this thing actually can break above about uh, $59 now, close a daily total above there, would be looking for a quick move to about $69. And that is quite literally $69. Not like a Mimi, but like an actual, like actually right around here I'd be looking for. Um, so again, I do see the volume, the volume signature of an, of an ascending brawny wedge, which is typically, you know, bearish, uh, like I said, bearish, bearish pattern. But um, lower time frames do want to give another rally here. They do want to give another rally. I mean, four hour it looks like it wants to go up. Uh, whatever, what are our medium time frame uh, time frames doing? We got eight hour right here. Uh, I mean, yes, it's technically down, but it's losing momentum and looks like it wants to cross the upside. What about ten hour? Ten hour actually is cross the upside, but not confirmed. Twelve hour is down and will be further confirmed if uh, if it stays here or lower by the next uh, five hours and twelve minutes. So again, if this guy does break down, sorry, girl, apologies. I really do apologize. Litecoin, I have much more respect than, for you to, than, than that to ever get that wrong again. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> um, if it does turn back down again, uh, if it does lose this area around one, or sorry, 55 and a half, I would be looking for a move down to about a 52 and a half somewhere here. Would look about right. Um, I would, I'd imagine that that area does get defended quite well. If that area does fail, then $50. Um, but again, you know, as long as, as, long as we're still... As long as we're still respecting this area as resistance, about $59, this is just the upper trend line of this uh, sending broadening wedge. So be careful of that. I'm curious what the daily is looking like. We Are we getting close to a golden cross on the daily? No. No, it's pretty far away. It's gonna take an, it's gonna take another few weeks, um, but hey, that would be a big deal to me. You know, if Mrs. Litecoin is going to is going to do something different, it is going to lead the market to the upside. Then, I'd I'd want to see this happen first. That'd be my next big signal, as far as I'm concerned. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it, it will get golden cross as long as it remains above about fifty dollars. Uh, but it's going to take you know probably like two three weeks. Unless if it has another massive lug up, then it'll happen a lot sooner. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go check out traditional markets. Traditional markets uh, did bounce up uh, end of day. Of course, we spoke about this in the morning video and during the live stream that you know once you saw it come back down below two, you know two seventy two and a half, two seventy one and a half in this range right here, that was the bounce ish territory. And of course, we bounce all the way back up, fill the gap um, from open. But uh, am I bullish on this? Am I bearish on this? Well, looking at a reaction like this. I'd be more neutral than anything um, because what's happening right now is we have two major competing narratives going on. We have actually closed below the daily 21 exponential. We both open and close below. We actually did regain the 200 simple by the end of day. Oh, okay. Maybe I take that back. I might be leaning slightly bullish here in the in the short term time frames. And we do have a daily total golden cross over here as well. So yes, it was likely to come down. But just like I said, and again, I'm not saying this to sound arrogant or anything like that. I say this so that you can go do this yourself, or or that we can get an overall understanding of how you know price action relates to each other uh, when it when it comes down to these major areas. Well. When I see a golden cross like this, you're likely going to bounce off that. It's likely going to be defended at the very least on the first pass. And the reaction coming in from here is going to be absolutely critical to see. Do we actually start? I mean, if this thing if this thing gets back above 279, that would be very, 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 very good. Right now, we actually did reclaim the 200 simple. So I would be looking for this rally to get extended. Probably next area of resistance is uh, 277. Um, I do think my personal opinion is that you do get higher than that. Uh, however, you know, we do have our, all of our daily also it is, you know, signaling more down, uh, daily stocks, uh, comfortably down daily R side kicked way out of the bullish control zone and, uh, trending below the exponential, but you know, do, you know, do for a little bit of a comeback, uh, daily jewel, not going to be saying anything. I mean, it, it gave the sell right here and then now we got to wait. <laughs> now we got to wait until the next magical signal. Um, so again, oh, by the way, I should also say, Jesus Christ, I always forget to talk about this. Technically speaking, I was going to have a sale for all my programs, 20% off um, next week, starting next week for the one year anniversary of this channel, which will be Tuesday. But because a lot of people want to get started early and, and I completely understand that you want to get started early because, you know, it just means that you're going to get better faster. I've been giving out the code, you know, throughout these videos. So if you want the, if you want the code, if you want to treat yourself a little bit earlier, use the code year 20, all capitals, Y E A R 20. Understand though, again, I always want to preface this conversation by saying that all my programs are not designed for people who are not 100% into this. These are designed for true diehards, people who want to typically do this as a living. doesn't mean that everyone in the program is doing this as a living, but I want to, I, I want to make sure that the group is of the same sort of mind, not because I'm some sort of tyrant, but because when we're all coming together to kind of go towards the same, the, the same sort of goal, I want to make sure that everyone's of the same, you know, of, of the same caliber. And I know that most people don't want to be a trader as a, li as, as a living. And I completely understand that. That's completely fine. You know, everyone, everyone has their own, um, uh, preferences and whatnot. That's all good. But for the people who do want to actually do that, then yes, this would be a good choice. If not, then, then definitely don't consider it all my free material is probably going to get 99.9% .9 of people to about where they want to be. And I've, pl and I have plenty of uh, playlists dedicated towards that fact and it's completely free. So check that out. Um, the new to technical analysis series and the technical indicators and strategy series. And then also, well, the option series now as well. Anyway, let's get off that topic and, uh, and back onto the charts. But yeah, that's what I'd be looking for spy. I would be looking for this bounce to be extended. Um, 277 is going to be your next resistance. I don't think that that one stops it. I think that it probably gives a test up to around 278, maybe, maybe even 279. That's going to be where the real test is. If it does reclaim 279, I would probably be bullish on it. Um, it's going to all depend off of the reaction off this, uh, off this golden cross, because again, if this gets respected, I do not want to be bearish. And from a higher level total time frame perspective, uh, reversal talk is not really, is not really appropriate until we actually break below about 264. Um, you can also see, you know, the weekly exponential is going to be supporting price action right around that, right, basically right, right down to where we came, uh, popped down to, which was front run, which does, which does imply bullish, uh, do, does imply typically more bullish nature. Um, also the 382 being defended pretty high fib anyways uh, okay we spoke about spot we spoke about the top two um, let's go on and check out uh, the bottom or sorry well I guess not not necessarily BNB BNB is not a bottom coin uh, but again it's you know it's it's doing its own thing it's been doing its own thing for a while I don't really consider it in the same category as the other uh, as the other cryptos uh, but basically yeah it looks like we do have our first rejection finally and likely I'd, ima I'd imagine that this probably does have some follow-through to the downside it would be looking for support 
I mean, technically, we bounce off support in the in the early night hours or early morning hours, uh, $13.87.5. If this area does get violated to the downside, I'd be looking down right around here, right around 1280, 1285-ish area. Um, overall, if this thing came all the way down to about $11.69, that would be, I'd, I'd say that that's probably the best, um, you know, if we have a very deep retracement, which this thing did not retrace all that much all the way up. So typically speaking, you will have, you know, if you don't retrace, if you trace shallow, you know, uh, for, for the most part, then you, at some point you will retrace deep. So if we did have a deep retracement, I would be looking for this $11 and 80 cent region, which would probably map out. Did I just completely fuck that up? Mm, oh no, that's, that's not, that's unrelated. I'm gonna get off that. Yeah. Would probably be a nice bounce. Um, but again, I do think that we've probably found highs here for now. Uh, probably going to go down and consolidate lower first. Uh, let's go check out um, Zcash. What's Zcash doing? Did he join in on any of the fun of last night? Do we have another massive wick from hell? Nope, we don't have that. But we are still in the overall context of a descending triangle. We are below all major moving averages. Not even able to test the 10 simple on that last up. What about Bcash? Bcash is the real Zcash. No, it's just in another descending triangle. And below all major moving averages as well. What about Tron Cash? Tron Cash seeing more continuation again i mean this is exactly what we said uh broke down below this uh this support trend line comes and tests the pink 200 simple pops back up retests the broken trend line as resistance confirmed probably going to pop back down to the 200 simple and i'd imagine we probably have another bounce off that if this does lose the 200 simple if we do close below the 200 simple at uh, 2.19 cent we'll be looking for a move down somewhere around here right around 1.9 let, let me actually put this guy in somewhere right around here would look about right there we go and I'll denote this support right around there. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, as, as long as it's below 2.47 cent, I would be overall bearish on this guy. Uh, Neocash, what's he doing? Above $9 right now, right at the resistance, giving the resistance another test last night as we saw, uh, but rejecting from it. Can we give another test at $9.30? I mean, uh, I mean, I would actually be kind of bullish off this. I would I, I would interpret this this action as bullish uh, and probably wants to break the uh, 935. Uh, daily Stoke, fresh cross up. Daily RSI looks okay. Um, did hold above the 21, uh, very healthily defended. I like that. Uh, Jewel could be setting up for a major sell at the same point in time. Uh, but if I was just looking at the daily, I would actually be, I, I would kind of interpret this as one at the very least wanting to give this area another go. If it does take out 935 and like a, you know, two hour dildo, I would be looking for, you know, run up to about 1040. So again, that is what is at stake right now. Uh, EOS Cash. What's EOS Cash doing? Again, another one of the more stronger ones of the top shit coins. Uh, but again, big area right here is uh, four dollars, about four dollars even. As long as you're below there, still just consolidation below all these major moving averages, and uh, in the overall context of a rising channel bear flag. It needs to get above about 450 to change some of the medium time frame perspective. Sorry, not medium, but macro time frame perspective. Medium time frame will be changed above four dollars. Um, let's go over and check out Ripple Cash. What's he doing? Ripple Cash giving another test of the overall uh, resistance trend line of this ascending triangle. Another ascending triangle, as you probably noticed. And also lining up with the green 50 exponential uh, on this guy as well. So as long as it's below about three point, uh, uh, sorry, 31.8 cents, I would still just look at this as another test of a resistance. And well, so far still holding. Um, but typically a bearish or sorry, descending triangle is bearish. And I would be looking at this with skepticism as, uh, we've seen a lot of, a lot of disappointment for ripple over the past year. If it were to take out 30, uh, 31.8 cent, I would be looking for a run to about 33, 33 and a third cent. If that area gets taken out, then we can actually test the most important resistance that I look for, which is 34 and a half cent. If 34 and a half cent is taken out, that will change around a lot for Mr. Ripple's nipples. But for now, uh, still below, healthily below all these, all the, all these resistances and uh, more importantly, in the context of a descending triangle, uh, Monero cash, what's Monero cash doing? Uh, Monero cash looks like he wants to, yeah, it looks like he wants to take a little bit of a little bit of a run as well. Actually, uh, did close yesterday as well as a massive selling dildo, not a bearish engulfing, but uh, what are the lower time frames saying? I'm curious what these guys say right now. Come on, baby, show me the money. Um, yeah, good reaction off off all these moving averages. Uh, you know, again, I'd be looking for another test of, of this range high right around fifty one and, and uh, three quarters. It's actually a little bit more accurately right here. If we could get it right again, it's it's difficult with these very uh, with these lower mark cap shit coins. It's, I mean, Mano is not a shit coin, right? Uh, I'm just using a term of term of endearment, um, but it's it's difficult because you get this very flighty floaty price action. The bots aren't so sophisticated there. 
Um, but yeah, you know, major resistance right around 54 and a half. That's where the, uh, that's where the semi macro perspective starts to get, get changed around, but lower time frames do want to rally. They do want to rally right now. Uh, stellar cash, what's stellar cash doing still in the context of a, of an ascending broadening wedge right here and testing, testing the resistance actually of this falling channel right here along the way, which is lining up perfectly with the 50 exponential, by the way, it looks very similar, sounds very similar to Mr. Ripple's nipples and above all major moving averages and using them to rally off of. I like this. I actually kind of like this. Uh, again, daily stokes will be very weak up, very flaccid. Uh, daily RSI is <laughs> really ugly. Uh, just consolidating between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone, typically not not the best sign. Uh, but if it can take out nine, nine, uh, nine uh, what is it, 9.1 cent, nine, nine and a tenth, then I would be looking for, you know, another test of about nine and a half. Uh, not, not too exciting right here. If nine and a half can, can get taken out, that's where things get a lot more interesting as I would be looking for a, ru a run up to around 11 cents. Uh, but yeah, there are a few good things uh, pointing up right now. Um, we do have Daily Jewel looking to be supported, which that would have given the buy signal right here. So has it already played out? Uh, that is a pretty good move, but I, I think that there, you know, typically the the Daily Jewel, if it gives if it gives a perfect signal, that is not a perfect signal. But if it gives a perfect signal, it'll give you more. Um, okay, cool. So we talked about all that. I think we covered most of what I want to speak about. Um, did I? Well, did we get it to everything? We got to. Okay, yes, we talked about that. Um, let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoin. Bitcoin actually at 38.93. Uh, Holy moly, this one's going to give a test right now. Let's actually uh, stay online for this. I want to see how it reacts right around here, right around this 3900 level, as that is a critical area to be aware of. And we are getting ever so close right here, right now. Very exciting times as I do look over on my other screen. And uh, you can see we're giving it another formal stab right to this horizontal at 3900-ish even. And it looks like we actually did close that hourly back above this, uh, this 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 broken trend line. So a little bit of a hunt to the downside right here. Look at the volume on this; just crawls its way back up. And that is, you know, being bought bought right back up like that is, you know, is fucking bullish. I mean, it is fucking bullish. Uh, but like we said, the lower time frame is likely to rally. Um, the real question is, can we actually confirm and close above this this next area? That's where the picture starts to change around. And looking like it's going to give, get a little bit more intense right now. Let's see if we can actually we can actually adjust this for the two-hour total time frame. Be technically coming in right around 39.07 uh, for that overhead resistance, uh, but plenty of wicks above. Remember, I really need to see this whole area destroyed right here. That's where the picture gets changed. If we can actually get above 39.40, if we can close a nice two-hour total above there, very, 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 very good. I mean, that's that's going to change around all of the all of the medium term time frames for me. Um, and I'd be bullish on them. And I would be looking for a run, you know, again, back to about 4,200 and probably beyond. But let's see if we can actually catch some. Uh, let me just see if my uh, if my account, if I can bring up my account right now. No, I'm, I'm still signed on to my, uh, I'm to, onto my main account. So I guess I'll stay off that for now. Um, but Jesus Christ, man, look at this. I mean, just look at this fucking wick. I mean, this is this is Bitcoin at its best. Just hunt them out and then run the other way. So nasty, and of course, it's going to be done on a weekend, which classic, classic shit. It looks like we are coming up against some resistance right now. We have to go to the very low time frames to figure this one out. Are we going to are we going to find uh, are we going to find a top here or not? It's going to be another sell. Um, I will into I will enter into a position on my main account if we do break back down below thirty eight seventy five for a scalp. Um, but I don't like entering in this area right here, especially after a quick comeback like this. You know, when you see when you see an asset, you know, basically put in a bear trap and then rally all the way back up immediately. I don't like taking that trade again. So I've been taking trades in this region for the last two weeks. One, two, sorry, two, three, four, five, six, and those have all worked. I don't think the seventh one's. I, I honestly don't think the seventh one's going to work. So I'm not really trying it right now. Um, let's see. I'm going to go over here to the six hour. I'm curious what, how are these time frames changing around? Yeah, six hour will be, six hour stokes will be hinting at a cross up uh, in this posture. And the three hour stokes are still headed healthily up. And two hour stokes, yeah, up as well. And everything's going to be up. Yeah, everything's signaling up right here. It's going to depend on how we, uh, on how we react. We are right in the thickness of this area. I think we're going to be testing 3,900 even now perfectly. And there it is, 3,902. Can we make another high over this guy right here? It's going to start to look a little bit more promising if we can. That's uh, 3,907 and a half. Currently four, four and a half dollars underneath right now. So come on, Bitcoin, show me the way, baby, show me the way. I'm curious how the other top shit coins are, uh, are reacting right now. We have Mrs. Litecoin. Where is she going to be around? Basically right here. 
where the last few last few hourlies have been finding resistance upon. What about Mr. Buterol? Uh, Mr. Buterol right here, uh, nowhere near, nowhere near. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. And again, you can see when it's actually in the moment, um, pretty damn pretty damn calm when this sort of shit goes down. Not, I mean, okay, there we go. Now we're now we're getting some movement. Just made another uh, little bit of a high over this last guy right here. Uh, Nine thirteen was prior high. Yes, we do have new highs, and I believe that that has changed around the daily. As far as that goes, we will be testing the 89 very, very soon. I'm going to stay on just for this if we can. It's coming in around 39.60, uh, sorry, sorry, 39.36 and a half. Um, getting right around there very, very soon. Holy moly, it's right there. And I do consider this now a formal test of this region. And let's see what the reaction is. Do the Does the selling take over? Do the bears actually defend this area or not? This is absolutely critical right now. If Bitcoin, if the bears do lose this area, I do believe that you're going to see some, some fireworks coming up. But so far, a test of this area and pushing off. Uh, how high did we get? $28 high. Sorry, $39.28 to be exact. And now ticking down a little bit. So it looks like first pass will be a sell. But this action does look overall good to me. You know, so again, it's we're, we're gonna have to wait this one out. I mean, it's gonna, I mean, we at least need to see like a two hour delta close above this area. Um, which actually, in the next hour, we will be confirm we will be closing four hour and eight hours. So, if this next hour, if this next uh, in this next 54 minutes and 28 seconds can get above this area again, 30, uh, 39 40, that's gonna be good enough for me. That's gonna be good enough. So, it can be decided very, 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 very soon. Let's see if we can actually get out the video beforehand. Um, but I'm going to probably end it here because I don't think that we're going to see all that much more. Uh, it does look like the first pass is going to be a rejection to me. Now what happens is uh, is the fun part. Where do we go from here? But quick, quick, quickly backing off this area is, mm, I wouldn't say the best sign. Uh, already 30 bucks under. Yeah, selling taking over right now. Let's see how much for the. I'll stay on for a little bit longer. Let's see how much for this can go before we get a, uh, a decent, you know, decent buyback. Um, I'm curious. Let's go back on over to uh, Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Yeah, right around the same range, finding you know finding resistance right around the last few tops. Uh, we'll be printing divergence as well, though, with a failure to to really close above. We will be printing divergences um, all the way up to maybe like a two hour. But you know you have all these medium time frame uh, also to starting to switch around to a more bullish posturing as well, which in this range would be interpreted pretty damn well. So, 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 let's check out three minute close with a massive look to the upside. You know what that means? No, of course not. Uh, let's see, five minute, not really telling us anything. I mean, it's, it's way too early to really gauge anything out of this, but a long wick like this above a resistance, you know, tells me that there is, t tells me that there is selling pressure. Bears are still defending. I'm curious, did we add any shorts or did we lose some? We lost some actually. We just lost about 500 shorts from when we last looked at it. And longs as well. Longs coming down as well. Longs going all the way from, lost 500 longs. 500 shorts, 500 longs, very strange behavior. We're seeing them basically go in conflict. So, so longs are taking profit, shorts are de-risking. Um, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, let's go back on to Mr. Bitcoin, still below uh, 39. Uh, yeah, it's looking, looking, looking like it's gonna be a sell probably. So I will probably take position after I end this video. Uh, again, if we if we violate like uh, 75 bucks to the downside, I will, uh, I, I, will, I, I will add on to a wick like this. Um, let's see, how's the, uh, how's the other pictures going to be changed around as yeah, four hour not, not really telling us anything unique about the charts right now, but Hey, again, oscillators are up. Oscillators are signaling more, more upside. Uh, five hour are going to cross up on the next tick as well. Six hour mm, can again, it's, it's actually going to really matter where this next, uh, where this next 51 minutes and uh, 57 seconds goes, cause it's going to have confluence with all of the five to, to 12 hours essentially which are going to are going to denote if we're going to actually open up or down on these next stoke crosses if we open back up then that's probably going to be the impetus for 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 running through this next zone but for now looking like uh Looking like it will be defended for now. Anyways, I'm gonna end the video right here as uh, <laughs> I'm fucking hungry, man. So uh, again, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you on this lovely Saturday morning. Wanna be wishing you well on this lovely Saturday morning as well. Uh, as always, wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest, and <laughs> just do whatever you want on this beautiful Saturday. I'm gonna go shopping for some more equipment gear. So if you do have any, um, if you do have any suggestions for new upgrades, please let me know. I'm always looking for upgrades to make this experience better because well, that's what makes it fun. And uh, oh yeah, if you are a video editor, um, hit me up. Be 
because I would love to speak with you. <laughs> um, of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, but I will be looking to hire someone, you know, in the in the near future to uh, to edit some videos. So if that sounds like you, I'd love to uh, I'd love to get in contact. And uh, with that said, I'm going to sign off right here. Again, keep your eyes on the 3940 level and 3790 level to the downside. Obviously, we're very far away from that right now, um, as that is the medium term time frame picture at hand. Take care and I'll see you soon.